We are now officially one week removed from Ring of Honor's latest showcase of professional wrestling in the Ring of Honor Summer Supercard that I went to see live. It was my first ever live Ring of Honor experience. Good evening, everybody. Now, I'm just a simple man, and my name is Noah Foster. Welcome to my first ever Ring of Honor Simple Take. I felt like it was fitting considering that I've followed Ring of Honor for years, but also this is my first live Ring of Honor event I've ever went to. I must say it was quite an experience. First off, I will say this. The place was not sold out. There isn't even seats in the front row uh, vacant. However, you cannot argue that crowd uh, Excuse me. had energy the entire night. And it was truly a showcase of incredible fun wrestling. The night kicked off strong with a great tag team opener as we had Villain Enterprises, PCO, and Brody King face off against the Kingdom. These four men are not strangers to each other. In fact, the only uh, pinfall, uh, sorry, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, Kiki O'Ryan and Mario Marcellia are former uh, tag team champions, with uh, Villain Enterprise currently being the Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Champions. It's um, quite surprising that these two have not faced each other for the uh, titles as of late. Of course, the kingdom last known for burning the uh, bouncers with their own uh, cigar. And in the end, Villain Enterprise, they did pick up the win here with PCO, of course, hitting his uh, moonsault off the top rope. It's truly something to behold seeing PCO live in action. This complete reincarnation of this man's career and this man left for dead. Truly something special it was. I also like afterward, though, the post angle, considering the feud between the Kingdom and the Bouncers that I saw in uh, pre-show, I guess you could say, actually, against a couple of jobbers, doing the toast of mine with them afterwards, too. But, hey, there was an all-out brawl, and the audience was like, let them fight, let them fight, let them fight. And it was just a fun spectacle to uh, see, uh, nonetheless. Uh, following that, though, we went straight into... This show wasted no time when it came to just going right into another match. Apparently, people were really against the uh, referee. Not um, Todd St. Clair. Seeing Todd St. Clair ref live, though, my goodness, that man does way, way too much. But I digress. Anyway, moving on from this, we got a match between PJ Black and Silas Young. Or at least that's what I thought I was going to get until Silas Young basically said that I'm not going to uh, wrestle you tonight. Uh, you're going to have to earn the opportunity to wrestle me again. So basically what happened here is PJ Black was left without an opponent. I was like, what's going to happen here? And then PJ Black says, hey, I came here to fight. I came here to wrestle. So who comes out? A guy that I met prior to the show was awesome to meet him first time ever at the meet and greet. He wasn't scheduled to compete at the time. Boy, was I a pleasant surprise. The villain, Marty Skrull. And he and PJ Black had one heck of a match. Of course, the opening bell rang. He went immediately for the umbrella shot Marty Skrull did because, of course, he's the villain. And, of course, I had all my greatest hits. Marty Skrull with some profanity, some sick kicks, some fake outs. The umbrella came into play later on or attempted to. I heard firsthand the wishbone that made me cringe. PJ Black brought it all out, though, bringing out some high aerial offense and even grounding the villain at times. Marty Skrull trying to lock in the chicken wing, but he won with, I believe, his uh, graduation move for a pinfall victory. Truthfully, this was one of my favorite things to see the entire night because I wasn't expecting to see it. It was awesome to see the villain, Marty Skrull, in action. Uh, following this, I believe next was... Apologies, folks. I don't remember the match order. It was my first taste of women's professional wrestling for the weekend as my own state um, representing the state of Ohio... The Ring of Honor, Women of Honor's champion, Kelly Klein, she went against Tasha Steeles, who defended her spot against the likes of Angelina Love, even before this. And again, this match, it was just about competition and respect. Both of these ladies brought it. It seemed slow at first, but again, it was a match of powerhouses, and even Tasha put out her hook, but it wasn't enough, as the gatekeeper maintained the keys to the kingdom, per se. And won the match. And it ended on mutual respect. My biggest fear about this match, though, was Andrew the Love coming to play and interrupting it. Fairly, she did until afterwards, so I was okay with it, but I was totally expecting it. I expect Andrew the Love and Kelly Klein to face each other down the line. But still, Tasha Steeles, don't sleep on her. I'm sure she's going after this towel again. More importantly, I'm surprised I didn't see Maria Manic at this event at all. And I feel like Maria Manic versus Kelly Klein right now is the next big money match I would like to see on TV. But again, kudos to finally seeing Ohio's own. Kelly Klein in action. You represent Ohio proud. And you represent Rivers Wrestling proud. Keep it up. 
Moving on from there, we were going to go into, I believe, the Ring of Honor World Television title match until the latest member of Villain Enterprises, Flip Gordon, he attacked Tracy Williams from behind with a kendo stick and a couple of shots later. And apparently the match was like, okay, we can't do this. So it was basically thrown out until later. And yes, I do mean later because he did come out later. Following this, though, we had one heck of a freaking... You know, I know Velveteen Dream is like the highest fan NXT, but there's no doubt in my mind that the most uh, flamboyant, ambiguous person in Ring of Honor is Dalton Castle. Here I see him coming out with what I fought where boys turned out it was just cows, further mocking the bull of Ring of Honor, Roos, as he and Roos took it to each other in a no-disqualification match. By the way, I was sitting uh, second row from the third row from this entire event, and I just felt the energy the entire night. This crowd was hot. I really do hope Riavada can pick it up with their ticket sales. Anyway, this match had everything, and I do mean everything. There was chair shots. There was going around the ring. There was over the barricade. Don Castle with a very unique entrance as a matador attacking and basically slaying the bulls with his uh, stylistic pen or whatever they call that, baton stick. Better bull up, whatever you want to call that thing. And basically when this match kicked off, Roos had the um, hot um, opening with Tranquilo. Dalton Castle at one point gave momentum with Tranquilo. And yeah, they used everything. Toolboxes, tools, chairs, trash cans. You name it. It was there in the ring. It was there at ringside, even the bellkeeper area. It was used. In the end, though, Roos remained undefeated and picked up the win in this match. Once again, declaring himself above Dalton Castle. This match went much longer than 17 seconds as well. I was fairly entertained by this. Moving on from here, though, we then got a, I believe, the Ring of Honor World TV title. No, I'm sorry. We got the special tax showcase between Bandito and Haskins and Lethal and Gresham. All four of these men brought it, but I knew that Gresham lately has been taking different tactics to try and pick up wins because he hasn't been picking up the wins lately. And they did come into play here, and it ended up causing his team. At one point, he came in with a chair. He was threatening to hit, uh, I believe, Bandito with the chair, and the ref was going to disqualify him until basically uh, Lethal played peacekeeper here, stopped it from happening. But Bandito and Haskins, they kept up the high, flying, fast-paced action. Bandito is as incredible as you see him on TV, and he was basically the star of this match. We got all the greatest hits, and in the end, Bandito won. And Bandito also got basically the ring to himself afterwards. And, of course, just standing ovation from the crowd as well. Bandito's got to be a future Ring of Honor World TV um, World Championship contender. And also, the crowd was red hot during this, but I'm curious to see if we're going to get Gresham versus Lethal based on the antics that took place, because obviously Gresham is in a dark place, at least being showcased on Ring of Honor television. And I feel like Lethal versus Gresham is in the works. But... Moving on from here, we then got the Ring of Honor World TV match between Shane Taylor, who's been shutting everybody up and talking to everybody's face. But Tracy Williams, he brought it much too um, as I expected. But I really wasn't expecting much out different than what I what honestly already expected here. In the end, he sent him home back to Cleveland. Shane Taylor, he won once again continuing his uh, dominance as Ring of Honor World TV champion. Hot Sauce Tracy Williams put out a lot of great hot spots here, no pun intended, but there was nothing here that conveyed to me the idea, he can win it, he can win it, which was kind of uh, daunting. Tracy Williams has been kind of like, in my opinion, lost in the shuffle. So, right now, we've had uh, no tile changes. But moving on from here, we got into some incredible Lucha Libre action, as this trios match, brought to you by CMLL, brought moves I wish I could tell you names of. And I learned a lot about these six men, including the caveman. I think that impressed me the most. But in the end, Stuka Jr., Caristico, and Sobrano Jr., they picked up the win for uh, this match. And again, this match was nothing but Lucha Libre at its finest. I cannot do this match enough credit for you. But again, I'm simple. I'm just keeping it simple. If you want more detail, I expect you to listen to Sawmaster or William Hayes or whoever... Follows me about it. I don't think there's enough people that respect and follow me about it, in my opinion. I think that's sad. Ray Vaughn is a really good promotion. Great talent. Anyway, moving on from there, we had the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship match between Matt Taven, representing the kingdom, coming out in purple robe and everything, versus the unorthodox, the deserving Alex Shelley. 
The biggest takeaway from this match, though, was a fan that I guess required medical attention, it seemed. But even his shoe got involved in this. Now, Alex Shelley did use everything here. At one point, I thought he was going to win. He did his finisher not once, but twice. Even pulling off Matt Taven's finisher, or one of his signature moves, the climax, I believe. A couple of very close near falls here, but in the end, Matt Taven won with not one, but two climaxes. And this was a very compelling Ring of Honor world title match. And of course, Matt Taven rubbing it in our faces, calling us all Melvins. I've been waiting for this match to be basically set up for, and it finally looks like it's going to be. Who interrupts him but the undefeated Roos. Which looks like it's going to be Roos versus Matt Taven next for the Ring of Honor world title at some point. If anyone's going to take the title off Matt Taven, it's got to be Roos. I feel like Matt Taven has really gone the distance with this title, but it's time for a change. Which then led us into our main event. A ladder war between the former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, the Gorillas of Destiny, and the current champs since day one, Man Up, Ring of Honor's own, them boys, the Briscoes. Violence, blood, wood, metal, all ensued here. And profanity too. There were so many spots here with a ladder broken in half, multiple tails broken in half, the Briscoes with crimson red faces, and GLD controlled most of the match, but in the end, the Briscoes, they did prevail. And this kind of makes sense because I feel like right now, Ring of Honor is going to go in business mostly just by themselves with CMLL, at least for the time being until WWE Pro tries and uh, prize that away. Because New Japan Pro Wrestling looks like they want to do their own thing, and the NWA are attempting to do their own thing with a weekly series. But... Overall, for my first ever Ring of Honor live TV live TV experience, excuse me, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish I had more takeaways, but it's really hard to take a lot away from a show that just doesn't get enough credit that it should. And I wasn't writing down anything. I was just enthralled by the action. Would I go to another Ring of Honor show? In a heartbeat. And as far as my grade for this show, I think it was better than SummerSlam overall from the card and the length of time and just the energy of the crowd. But I wouldn't call this better than TakeOver. I personally gave this show middle of my grades. I gave this show a B plus. It wasn't perfect. There were a couple of slow spots, in my opinion. But overall, I was fairly entertained. And we did get caught on in the end between the Briscoes and GLD. Probably riding them off in the sunset. I'm curious to see what's next for all Ring of Honor. I'm curious to see who they really cater to as their top stars leading the Ring of Honor. I can honestly see them putting the rocket on... Bandito, Roos, definitely keeping lethal in the fold. I'm curious to see who's next challenge for the Ring of Honor Six Man Tag Team Championships. I know they got events coming up in the uh, UK, in Baltimore, and in um, other places as well that I can't figure right now. But that's just my simple take on this Ring of Honor event. If you were at Ring of Honor Summer Supercard, I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you thought of the show. And of course, like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Tell a friend to check out Ring of Honor. It's free every week on Fight TV, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, because they do their tamings a lot differently. It looks like, according to news I'm reading right now, Taming will challenge Lee Full Cobb and Kenny King in a clash called Defy or Deny in Nashville, Tennessee. But of course, I head back to college, NUT. I only look at pay-per-views, not Ray of Honor live TV specials. But if you want to know more about me besides that, know this. I'm just a simple man and a lifelong fan of wrestling. You want to follow me talking anything from wrestling, my Twitter is nodq.com forward slash Noah. And also, you can follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Noah Foster 210 where you'll find all sorts of things wrestling, Takes, reviews, recast, predictions, WWE and beyond. Ring of Honor, Impact, New Japan for Wrestling, Independent Wrestling, Support Independent Wrestling folks, and of course, AEW. And more. Stay tuned, there's a lot of content coming to this channel, including a Bracketology video on King of the Ring and the Super J Cup, as well as predictions on All Out, uh, Ring of Honor, no, sorry, New Japan Pro Wrestling Bureau Quest, and uh, NXT UK Takeover Cardiff. Jeez, that's a mouthful. And also, as I like to close, Support wrestling else by big and small. Let's keep growing this incredible wrestling community together. Simple as that. Cut it, Klein. Keep on fighting for winner of honor. Matt Taven keeps proving me wrong. I guess I'm a Melvin. And also, one more thing I forgot to mention. Joe Henry also signed Ring of Honor. Curious to see what he brings to the fold as well. I can see him immediately going after the Ring of Honor World TV title. But again, we'll see. Until next time, enjoy life. Enjoy wrestling. Take care of your families. Check out Ring of Honor. Check out the Summer Supercar if you get a chance. Check out Women of Honor. They're doing a lot of great things there. Kelly Klein is definitely leading. 
I think they have better women's professional wrestling than the main roster does at times, especially during Raw and SmackDown Live. I'm glad they don't have tag tiles because we see what tag tiles mean in WWE, especially for women. And until the next video, enjoy life, enjoy wrestling, take care of your families. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. I am extremely tired. I have a free day tomorrow and then it's about to work on Sunday with my channel. You all have a good night.